Canada has three oceans surrounding it with little or no protection for the majority of this coastline. There are many different groups and individuals with a stake in the ocean. Each one has something to lose from the collapse of Canada's wild fish. Former fisheries hauled in hundreds of tons of fish, where now there are only a few remaining individuals. Lingcod stocks are at 3% of their historic levels. Let's be clear, the only motive is corporate greed and profit. You don't own those rivers. You don't own that environment. That's ours. They literally fished out our territory. Habitat destruction is continuing despite lessons learned on the collapse of our East Coast fish stocks. Be careful. We You can't put anything foreign into the ocean. The ocean is still considered one of the prime areas for dumping waste. It is a complicated process to determine jurisdiction, let alone what needs to be done. Aboriginals lay claim to much of the ocean and the fish in it. The provincial governments lay claim to the foreshore. The federal government lays claim to the control of the ocean's offshore resources. And commercial and sports fishers demand their rights to fish. DFO sent one boat in to test fish, and in three days you got 12 fish. Which brings us back to stating the case for conservation. We have some great models in the world to help us to see what can be done. Australia has much the same governmental system as Canada and also has an Aboriginal component. They have proven that a comprehensive conservation effort will work. We live in democratic countries. If people want something and if they put enough pressure on the government, then changes will happen. We have to understand that fish, like children, need a safe place to be raised. We have to have areas that will allow the fish stocks to come back, and that is in our own backyard.